Hello, thank you so much for being with us today. I'm Sister Cecilia Joy, a Franciscan Sister Christian Charity, and we're here today with Bishop Robert Brennan of the Diocese of Columbus, Ohio. So welcome, Bishop Brennan. Thank you, Sister. I'm thrilled to be here. Yes. And uh, what's really beautiful is Bishop Brennan, he is a bishop in the Diocese of Columbus, and that's actually where some of our sisters are, our sisters in Zanesville. They work at the Genesis Healthcare System. So um, it's just really great to interview the bishop <laughs> that oversees that area. So, um, and actually I was doing some research on Bishop Brennan, and he actually grew up in New York. So how was okay. that, Bishop? I grew up, I, I was born in the Bronx. Um, and when I was about six years old, my family moved to Long Island. We outgrew the apartment and uh, I was the, I'm the oldest of four. So um, when, when we outgrew the apartment, we moved to Long Island, the South shore of Long Island. I grew up there and really from that point on, almost all my life was Long Island. I went to high school there. I went to college. I went to St. John's University. I went to the seminary there. Everything was right there in, on the island and, uh, and, and and I was settled in and I figured I'm going to be, uh, this, this is where I'm serving the Lord here on the island. And one day I got a call saying, no, you're not serving on Long Island anymore. <laughs> but, um, but it's been a great transition from New York to Ohio. I love being here in Ohio. Mm -hmm. And you actually just recently became the bishop according, like was, was it 2019? 2000, just coming up on two years, March of 2019. Wow. March 2019, yes. Yeah, so talk about some of your experiences that kind of led to you being bishop. Anything exciting or interesting? Well, uh, not too exciting. I tease, people say, where did you, did, did you do uh, any, any more study after, uh, after ordination? And I, I'd say, I went to the School of Hard Knocks. That was it. I <laughs> did not do any postgraduate study. I, uh, I, I was a parish priest for five years, and then after to that five-year term, um, Bishop McGann invited me to come to serve as the, his secretary, priest secretary. And I did that for three bishops and then was vicar general for a number of years. Um, so I've, I've spent a lot of my time in diocesan work, but Bishop McGann was very, very generous to me. So when he asked me to come in to serve in his office, he also had me live at the cathedral rectory, which was a very busy parish. Uh, probably one of the larger parishes on Long Island. And so it's great living among priests, but I had regular parish duties too. So I always was, I, even though I was doing diocesan work, I continued to do funerals, I weekday mass schedule. I was involved in the parish school, visiting the hospital. So, um, so I had that happy experience all the way through. Um, and, um, and so my journey was kind of, um, normal in a sense. It was basic parish life, but with a little bit of a foot in diocesan work. And then as vicar general too, I had the good fortune of living within parishes, having some connection. I was given the chance to be a pastor for two years. I was in um, a parish on Long Beach, New York, on the very, a, a barrier island. <laughs> and I was there at St. Mary of the Isle. I served there for two years and that's when I was named a bishop. So I had to give up being a, a pastor. And in fact, from that point on, being an auxiliary bishop meant I belonged to the wider diocese. So I lost some of that parish connection because I was going to many different parishes, but that opened up a new world for me. Mm -hmm. So what um, placed it on your heart to become a priest? Was it like ever since you were really little, you wanted to be a priest or? Yes, um, I don't remember a time of not wanting to be a priest. Of course, I thought of other things Mm -hmm. um, and I wasn't ready to go to the seminary right out of college. I knew I wanted to be a priest. It was no, there wasn't even a slight doubt in my mind. I didn't, I didn't need more time to discern. That's the, the use the more common language today. I didn't need that time. I knew I wanted to be a priest, but I, I wanted a regular university life. I studied math in college mm -hmm. and um, I was involved at St. John's University in regular campus life. It was a commuter school. So I used to take the Long Island Railroad in every day and get a bus, um, but, uh, but, but I had a, a good group of friends in different circles, my, my commuting circle, my class and, and major circle, uh, campus ministry circle, I had different circles of friends. Um, but it, so it was great being part of a larger university for me. Um, I, was in, I did work in my home parish, so 
I had a good deal of support and formation there, but it's, for as long as I can remember, I wanted to be a priest. Thought of other things along the way, but always came back to wanting to be a priest. Wow, that's really special. What's your favorite part about being, um, well, first a priest and then a bishop, like what's your favorite part? What do you enjoy most? Well, being a priest, it's really um, touching on the um, important parts of people's lives and not touching upon them for my own sake, but touching upon those important parts with the power and the love of Christ. That what I have a chance to do is to bring um, Christ to people and to point to the presence of, of, of the Lord. And so um, really to uh, celebrate those joyful moments in people's lives and, and keeping them connected to the Lord. But also I've had some pretty, been involved in very sad, very tragic moments and to, to bring the voice of Christ into those moments. Um, so uh, that, that's one of the things, it's just being, being part of people's lives. As a bishop, I'm, I, I, I joke um, after being named an auxiliary bishop and so not really being connected to one parish per se, and uh, being more in administration. Also, there was a change of bishop, and so I had more of an administrative role in, 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 in that administration. Um, being a bishop, I have to say, it's like being a pastor again. Mm -hmm. I, I get to, I rely on the help of a lot of other people, and I get to connect with people in their parishes and in their life. Again, granted, it's a much bigger part of the diocese, so it's, I don't have the intimacy of life that I would, would have had as a pastor, but it's just so exciting to go into um, so many different parishes, experience parish life. And one of my favorite parts as a bishop is um, I'm for, I, I, I just consider myself so fortunate here in Columbus uh, to be connected to the priest who are here. We have such a good group of priests in this diocese and I absolutely love working alongside that group of priests. They are such a great support um, and, um, and help. But I, I just, I, I get that sense. And I had this back at home, but I, they've been so welcoming here. I really feel like I'm part of the, that team of priests, that fraternity of priests. They've welcomed me so warmly. And, um, and, and I, I, I appreciate that an awful lot. I'm so glad to be part of this presbytery. As part of being a bishop, you have what's called an Episcopal motto, and yours is thy will be done. And I think that's so perfect for vocations, where we're offering ourselves to the Lord and saying, you know, thy will be done. Do you have any advice um, for those of us discerning vocations? Sure. Um, yeah, thy will be done comes out of the Lord's Prayer. And and I, um, I just a short story on the side, I, I copied that from my grandfather's gravestone, my, the tombstone, and my and uh, both my grandfathers died relatively young, and so visiting the cemeteries is part of our family tradition. And um, so, and my father's father died even before I was born. I, I always say those words were my first encounter with scripture, and it's true for all of us. For me, it was true somewhat literally because those are the first written words of scripture that I saw repeatedly put in front of me. Um, but even for most of us who learn the faith as children, um, that's our encounter with, Christ with, uh, with the scripture, the Lord's Prayer. We learned it at our parents' knees and, uh, um, and Jesus himself gave us that prayer. So yeah, that, that was always an important role. And you know, when I came time to choose an Episcopal motto, I said that, I told that to my family. And my father, who's not very emotional, but my father was a little emotional about that one. And he said, you know, that was your grand, that was a very important phrase to your grandfather. And that, and really more from the uh, agony in the garden, not my will, but thine. That was really it more, but that I will be done, they, was what they could put on the gravestone, but um, he showed me the the prayer card, and uh, that was very. It was my grandfather had a tough life, and that was his prayer, and that's what sustained him. So here it is. I'm 50 years old. My grandfather, who died before I was born, 
is teaching me through my own father. Mm -hmm. A very important lesson about God's will. So I took that to heart, but you're right. In terms of vocation, I will be done. You know, I was just by chance with a group of fellows who work at Damascus, a very um, evangelical Catholic camp. And the, the people who work there are missionaries. They consider themselves missionaries, they're true missionaries. And um, the vocation director and I were there and they said, what advice would you have for us, for people our age? And I think that was, that was where I went. It, I didn't use those words, I will be done. If I had you by my side, sister, I would have. <laughs> <laughs> but I said, really, try humbly and joyfully to listen to where the Lord is speaking to you. And, I, and those words are so important to us. I will be done. Yes. See, ask God, what is it that you're trying to accomplish in my life? And, um, and to take that other phrase of the Lord, not my will, but your will be done. And instead of trying to squeeze God's will into what I think is, should be happening, but humbly, joyfully ask the Lord, what is it that you would like me to do? Where are you leading me? How how can I be part of your plan? And I think that's where we will find our happiness. For sure. Because God knows what ultimately will make us happy. Like, he he does. Exactly. Inside and out. So true. So true. Well, thank you so much, Bishop Brennan. It's wonderful to talk with you. And sister, it's so wonderful to talk with you. And um, as I love the sisters in Zanesville. I love that the Franciscan sisters are here. One of the things we're going through a period of renewal, we're calling it real presence, real future, trying to build the Catholic presence here. And one of the things that we're so uh, cognizant of is that we stand on the shoulders of people like your sisters who built up so many wonderful things here. And now what we want to do is take the baton and run with it and, and continue to shine the, the presence of Christ. So I, I can't tell you how grateful I am to your sisters for what they've built up here and for what they continue to do by their presence. They bring the presence of Christ in a very powerful way in Zanesville. Well, thank you so much. Such, such kind words. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, and thank you so much, everyone, for watching this video. We hope to keep on sending more videos your way that you can watch. And um, just may God's blessings be with you all. Thank you so much, everyone. God bless.